My wife was a real estate agent and was doing really well. She had completed eight transactions in her first year and was looking to get at least 16 for her second year. She was killing it and I was so proud of her. On one particular day, she was really busy. So I told her I could drive her around so she could work in the passenger seat. She loved that and I got major brownie points. There were three destinations that she had to go to. The first one was easy. She just had to stage some balloons. She told me I could stay in the car and she would be out soon. So I waited and watched some funny videos. She came out and off we went for a second stop. At the second stop, she had to do a seller consultation for an older lady who had lost her husband and was looking to downsize. That appointment was longer for sure, so I watched a lot of funny videos. When I'm talking about videos, I'm talking about vines. Vines are probably some of the funniest videos I have ever seen, and it keeps me thoroughly entertained for a long time. I especially like Ariel Vandenberg. She just cracks me up. After about an hour, she finally came out and got in the car. I asked her how it went, and she said, I got the listing. She was so excited and looked so cute. I was very proud of her. We had a quick celebration and then we were off to the final stop. This was the last one for the day. But the last one, she had to do a showing to a buyer client. She pulled up and the guy was already there waiting for us. My wife leaned over and kissed me and told me thank you for helping me with everything. That made me feel really soft inside, but I loved it. They went inside and I waited. I was on a vine marathon so far, so I figured I would just continue it while I waited. Before I knew it, I had been sitting there for 30 minutes. I started to wonder what was taking so long. I called her, but her phone just kept ringing. It wasn't going straight to voicemail. It was weird. So I got out of the car and went into the house and started calling for her. All the lights were on. I searched the hole downstairs and I couldn't find her. So I started to make my way upstairs. I was calling for her, but she wasn't answering me. I did not see the guy either. I got to the master bedroom and I did find her, but not like what I wanted. She was dead and the buyer client she had must have been the one that killed her. We had everything going for us. Everything was perfect. And it was taken away so fast. I love you, darling. And I miss you. I was doing a final walkthrough of a house for my buyer and decided to bring my husband on this particular trip to carry a small desk that I had picked up as a housewarming gift. He was also a real estate agent, but only really refers clients to me. He has a full-time job and collects retirement and disability from his time in the military, so he's making plenty of money for the family. He is usually picking up the slack at home, taking care of the kids, and cooking meals so I can do my real estate stuff. We got to the property I had been to a few times, and my husband commented on the poor condition of the neighborhood. I guess I had been there a few times and didn't remember it looking so run down, but he had fresh eyes. In the parking lot of the condo, there was no one anywhere, but we did see a group of guys across the street. I don't want to stereotype and say they look shady because they're in a poor neighborhood, but they did. Sorry. We put the desk in the house, and my husband looked around, since this was his first time here. He just had to flush all the toilets and turn on and off all the lights, like any realtor does when they walk into a house to make sure there's full functionality of all the house things. He opened and closed the windows as well. When he was closing one of the windows, he noticed that the same group of guys from earlier were walking away from the condo parking lot and into a red Ford Bronco. 
My husband is a paranoid guy that pays attention to stuff like that. He is diagnosed with PTSD from his Navy career and is always watching anything out of the ordinary. He mentioned it to me, but I just brushed it off as a coincidence. We were driving home when my husband looked over at the dashboard and pointed out that I had an exclamation point sign. We were going 80 miles an hour on the freeway, so my anxiety started to creep from my stomach through my throat to my head. I was getting overwhelmed with the possibility of having a flat tire at any moment and losing control of the car. He assured me that it would be okay in his calm voice and said I just needed to get some air in the tire. That does happen from time to time. He might have been keeping a secret from me at the time to make me feel better, which I do appreciate, but he had a worse secret he was hiding from me. He saw a red Ford Bronco right behind us. He called his friend, Nathan, and told him to meet us at our usual neighborhood gas station and said some other things that I couldn't understand. I asked him what he was talking about, and he said nothing. Nate was just going to meet us at the gas station just in case there was a bigger issue with the tire. When I saw the gas station I usually go to, I was so happy, but only for a short time. I started to hear a metal grinding sound when I turned to the off-road for the gas station. A man in the car beside me told me my tire was flat. I was freaking out inside now, thankfully going five miles per hour now. My husband calmly talked me into the gas station parking lot and told me where to park after I stopped in the middle of the road out of nervousness. I pulled in with no issue. Then my anxiety went into overdrive. A car pulled in directly next to us. It was a red Ford Bronco with four big men with baseball bats inside their car. They all got out of the Bronco and surrounded our car on all sides. They started hitting the car and I started screaming. The next thing I heard was the screeching sound behind us and police sirens wailing. Nathan had come in his cop car. He stopped all the guys and arrested them. It turns out the guys were paid by the seller of the condo to take me out so the deal would fall through. The seller had decided not to sell for their low amount and they were willing to take me out to stop the deal. They felt like they were going to lose out on $100,000 so they decided to pay $5,000 to take me out. People are so greedy. I am very thankful for my husband. It was his paranoia that saved us. I was looking at a house for my client, and my husband was always giving me a hard time about going to see houses alone. I usually did have a lender with me or another house agent, but sometimes I was by myself. I really did not know what the big deal was. I never had any trouble. I had seen many houses and never experienced an issue. I think he was being ridiculous. He always used the squatters thing to scare me, but I have never seen squatters in a house I was looking at for a client. I love the guy, but I think he worries too much sometimes. So I get to the house, which is basically a mansion. It had been vacant for a month and the seller needed to get rid of the property because he was paying two mortgages a month and could only afford one. I was doing the initial walkthrough to identify any issues before we put it on the market. I had my clipboard and my checklist. I walked through the front door with the intention to look around room to room. However, I changed my mind when I opened the front door. In the main living room, there were all these people that looked dirty and strung out on something. They all looked at me at the exact same time, and I was like a deer in the headlights. They got up and grabbed machetes and ran after me. I ran to my car, but because of the size of the driveway, the car was a decent distance away. I was in a full-on sprint with my business jacket, pants, and high heels. I didn't know I could sprint with heels that fast but I did. 
They were chasing me through the yard, like they were really going to kill me. I got in the car and sped off, away from these deranged lunatics. It was just a horrible experience. I went to the cops, and they investigated the situation. The cops told me these squatters had been given a receipt for drywall work they had paid for, and the police told me it was legitimate proof that they lived there. I reiterated that they had chased me with machetes to my car. The officer told me that nothing actually happened to me, and these people were occupying the home lawfully, providing a receipt for an upgrade to the property. He said there was nothing they could do, and they walked away from me. I told my clients what happened. They tried to talk to these squatters face to face, but there was no use. The squatters were permanently in there, and it would have to be settled out of court. My clients finally got access to their house nine months later and were in debt $60,000. I guess the squatters didn't pay the mortgage. After that, I never went looking at houses unless I had someone with me. And guess what? I made my husband come a lot more than ever before. And my cousin and my husband commented when he was closing one of the windows, he noticed that the same group of guys He noticed that the same group of guys Uh where am I? Where am I? I don't know where I am. I don't know where I am in the story. I lost my play. Uh, when he was closing when he was closing one of the windows he noticed the same group of guys from God, why do I keep saying it like that we were driving home when my husband looked over at my dashboard and pointed out that I had an ex and, and um, hold on we were off the freeway and I was close to home now when I saw the gay sh- the gaze. The gaze. Get the gaze. Put the gaze in the car. Get the gaze in the car, man. The seller had decided not to sell for their lower ma- lower lower Australian lower and these people were occupying the home lawfully. Lawfully. 